All right, it is that time of year again when we get these huge new updates to all the Adobe apps with Adobe Max. And there is some huge new changes in Lightroom. Let's jump in and take a look. What's cracking my photography friends? Hope you're all doing really well. I'm excited today to go through all these big updates with you. Of course, last year we had the big update to masking where we could do things like subject select, sky select. Now we have further improvements to this. You can now select the background. You can even select individual people. We also have this new object select tool where you can quickly paint over objects to select them. And another big one, we now have content aware inside Lightroom, further reducing our need to open up Photoshop. But perhaps the most exciting one for me is for portrait editing. Now, not only can you select individual people in your photos, you can now select all the individual features of that person within your photo as well. So we have some big, big updates. I've been playing around with all of them, basically so you don't have to. You can see exactly how they work and how they are going to benefit your editing. Let's jump in. So let's start with perhaps the biggest one, which is selecting individual people for masks in your photo, as well as their individual features. Firstly, with portrait here, I'm just gonna whack on one of my presets to make it a little bit more moody, just make a quick adjustment. All right, let's come up to masking. So now you can see we've got a lot of different options here. The one I wanna show you is, it's automatically found my person already. What we can do by clicking on that, you can see it's found all these individual features as well. So now we can click on them to create individual masks for each of them. So let's go for this one. I want the face, don't want that. I want maybe the eyes, the iris as well. And also let's go hair and let's go create four separate masks. So now we've got the exact same mask here as we usually would, but it's automatically selected these areas for us. We can go and make adjustments to just those areas. So this is really handy. It's gonna save you heaps of time for your portrait editing. I'm just gonna zoom in so I can see exactly what we're doing with these masks. So first of all, starting with the hair, sometimes with the hair, I wanna add in a little bit more texture or clarity to the hair just to make it stand out a little bit more. So let's just do that about there, not too heavy. I'll just bring that back a fraction. Also with the face, one thing I usually go in and paint the face using a brush. Now it selects automatically. I can go in and just soften the skin on the face a little bit. So this is really, really handy that it's finding this for me. I don't have to do it myself. For iris, we've already got this iris enhance in Lightroom that we could use, which just increases saturation, clarity, and also exposure. And then we have the eyes as well. So here I might wanna increase the exposure, not too much, and maybe also the saturation, just so they look nice and white. So if you are someone that likes to make these little tweaks to different features in your portrait photos, this is really going to be game changing for you. And it largely works pretty well. You may have noticed that hair example I used, it picked up some of the neck, but overall, usually it does a pretty good job. Now, even better about this is the fact that if you're someone that shoots a lot of group photos, you might be a wedding photographer or you shoot a lot of couple photos, now it will automatically find all your individual subjects. If we have a look at people, it's automatically found those three different people, we can go in and create individual masks for each of them. So when you're working with couples, this can be even more handy. And you can see we've got both people found really quickly and easily. So if I wanted to go in and maybe just soften her skin, but not his, I could go face skin and maybe the eyes as well. So let's just go create mask. I can go in and make those adjustments just to her as well. So this is really handy if you wanted to do something like reduce the saturation on just one person's skin tones as well. If one was looking a little bit bright to orange, you could reduce just one and not the other. If you need to go in and create some masks on the other person, all you need to do is come up to plus, come down, select people again. And now we get this feature where we can add in all our masks for him as well. So for him, let's just go entire person for this one, create masks. I might wanna increase my clarity, texture, maybe the exposure a little bit if he was looking a little bit dark. 
So being able to automatically find these different features, even for different people in the same photo, I think this is a really cool feature that a lot of people, especially wedding photographers, are really going to get a lot out of. The next one is these new adaptive AI presets, which will recognize all these individual areas or parts of your photo, and you can apply them to edit just that specific part, which is really handy as well. So we have enhanced portrait. If we click on that, we can actually go in and see what it did. It found the teeth, it found the iris and pupil, eyes, face. It's gone in and softened the face a little bit. Let's just undo that. We've also got things like gritty portrait. Let's have a look at that. Not a big fan of that one. Let's go undo. But even things like just smoothing the hair or adding texture to the hair, we can do that now with one click. You can also go and create your own presets like this that just apply masks. If you're unsure, you've got these ones already in Lightroom. So now you can select the background as well. Now previously to do this, I would select a subject and then invert it. So it kind of was possible, but quickly just with one click of a button, this makes it much easier to do this. So now under masking, we also have this select background tool. So this is really handy when you wanna apply settings to the background as well. One click and we found our background. I can go and maybe soften the background a little bit. I could haze it a little bit, give it that dreamy look. I could desaturate it or I could make it a little bit cooler. All these things you can do by quickly selecting your background now as well. So let's just try another example using our background select and see how it went. Again, I think that's done a pretty great job. We can go and adjust the settings just to the background as we see fit. The next one I've been playing around is this new object select tool, which for me seems to work really well, especially when you're trying to select an object in your photo that isn't a person. So again, I've already applied a quick preset to this, which was Komorabi Extra, if you are interested. So now I wanna try and quickly select this canoe. So of course we could have tried subject select, but it hasn't found the canoe very well. So what I'm gonna do is come down to objects, this new feature. You can either select to use a brush or a rectangle tool to try and find the area. So let's use the brush. Again, you can change the size of the brush. And I'm just quickly going to paint over the canoe. And boom, it's found it really quickly, really easily. I can go and make some adjustments to that canoe as I see fit. Now let's see how it goes trying to select these trees in the background. So come down again to objects. This time we'll use the rectangle and I'm just going to create a box over those trees there. And boom, again, it's found it really well. I can go and make some adjustments there to the trees as I see fit. So object select overall has done a really good job from all my tests today. It's one I'll definitely be using a lot of. Of course, it doesn't always hit the mark, but overall it largely does a pretty good job. The last one of course is this content aware tool. So what I wanna know, is this going to reduce our need to open up Photoshop? Previously with the healing tool in Lightroom, we still have this in Lightroom of course, you could use it for very tiny adjustments, but if you wanted to remove anything more distracting, you would still have to open up into Photoshop. I think for me, you're still going to have to in some cases, but this is definitely an improvement with content aware. Got a photo here of our puppy Sake. He is a nice independent puppy. He doesn't need this leash. So I'm gonna try and remove it from the photo. If I go back, you can see my attempt to remove it using the old healing tool in Lightroom. It hasn't done a great job and it's mutated his poor leg. If I come across back to our original, let's see how the new content aware remove tool goes. So I'm gonna come over to healing and underneath, this is where I will find the new content aware remove tool. So click on that. Of course, you can adjust the size and opacity. I'm gonna try and do the whole thing at once just to see how it goes. So let's brush out that entire leash and see how it goes. Now it's done an okay job. We do have more options here than previously. You can see we can now hit refresh as well, which is really cool. And it hasn't really changed much but that refresh has actually really improved it. So we can see it's still not perfect, but it has done a much better job than previously. And considering that was a pretty hard removal, 
it's actually done an okay job in my opinion. So another attempt here and I want to show you another cool feature. So let's try and get rid of this person here and see how that goes. Okay, it's done a pretty good job. But the other thing I want to show you as well as refresh, which for me doesn't always hit the mark. That one's actually done an okay job. We can also use this command and drag. Now what this will do is basically whichever area you select, it will use that area to try and fill your selection area. So that one, for example, really helped. So options like this definitely improve this feature even further. Let's try it on this person as well. That one's definitely a little bit trickier. Let's hit refresh. The refresh has helped a little bit, but let's try and use our own sample area by clicking command and drag. So let's just click this rock here. See how that goes at replacing it. Again, this one's just a bit too tricky. So you can see even with the new features, refresh and command drag, sometimes like this one, it really helps. Sometimes on the left, it's still a Photoshop job. So another example, so I'm just gonna do this really quickly, get rid of as much as possible. And you can see for things like this, it's actually working really well. It's doing a really great job. Let's try this big one, this stick here and see how it does. So again, it's done a really good job. So content aware doesn't always hit the mark for me, but it is still definitely an improvement from the old healing tool. So play around with it. You'll work out when it works, maybe when it doesn't work for which things you should be using it. Hopefully this does improve as the AI does get better the more it's used, but just having this added into Lightroom is definitely a plus. All right, I hope you did find this one useful. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I will catch you in the next one. Keep on creating and keep on going, my friends. Bye for now.